Afternoon and happy Sabbath again, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. It's nice to be back here um, in the Alabama Church for just for a couple of a couple of uh, Sabbath. We were in um, we were in Paris, and it's nice to um, to visit and see you know our brothers and sisters in um, in Paris. Um, they were very welcoming, and um, obviously mostly are Filipinos there, but you feel at home, um, you know, uh, fellowshipping um, in their church. Um, but it's nice to be back here in the Isle of Man and to see you all again. Um, I miss you all. And um, the title of my sermon for this afternoon is we all need a superhero. But before I proceed, shall we bow down our heads for prayer? Our great God, can loving and heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as I start my sermon, dear God, may you will give me, Lord, the knowledge and wisdom that I need. Please open our hearts, our minds, our Father, to receive your message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So talking about superheroes, I think we have... Um, Pass through our face in our life that we um, admired and fascinated uh, with superheroes. You know, my son would usually ask me, "Yeah, Pop, if you have a, if you have a superpower, what would it be?" You know, every week I think he would ask me that, and I, I was randomly would say maybe flying or power of being in, you know invisible or something. And I remember growing up. Um, I think when I was around seven or eight, I was so like, um, fascinated with uh, He-Man and She-Ra. I think that is around late 80s. And we would like um, imitate them, you know, pretending that we have the same powers as them. So I would be in my pants and um, with a towel around my neck, pretending it's like a cape and I would, like a stick, like pretending it's a sword. You know, imitation. And um, during our elementary days, um, I remember me and my sibling, we are into um, Power Rangers. And um, I remember even my sister um, dressing up like the, the Yellow Ranger in one of our school activities. And during high school, I think we progressed into Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, X-Men, um, in college, um, you know, Avengers, we are into that. But um, just a, a fun fact, I think the stories of um, superheroes started during the war time. During the 1930s, um, Superman flexed into our screen, um, you know, fighting against the Nazis and saving the day. And, you know, some superheroes acquire their superpowers through freak accidents and mutations, um, like Incredible Hulk, like Spider-Man, you know, being beaten by a spider and um, uh, acquired his power through that. And we identified with superheroes struggling with being human. But in spite of their struggles of opposition, of adversity, they overcome bringing hope and comfort to the world. But the truth is, we all need a superhero. Why? Because we cannot save ourselves. Let me read to you in the book of Psalms, 146 verses 3 to 9. It says, Do not put your trust in princess, in mortal man, who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose hope is in the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. 
but he frustrates the way of the wicked. And how's that for a superhero? Our Lord is a superhero with a heart. You know, he upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. You know, for those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the answer to our mortality, for he provides eternal life. And no other superhero could do that. Church, we need a savior, not only who can save us from all our troubles, but could give us peace, could give us that eternal life. And it's only Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that could do that, that could give us that. Amen? So let's look at the character of Jesus Christ and why he is the ultimate superhero. We may know Jesus as the man being crucified, but not everyone knows why he was crucified. When he was at the cross, he was mocked. You know, people would, would mock him saying, you know, if he claims to be God, why he can't even save himself up there? So why did it, so why he allowed that to happen? It's one simple answer, to save us. As said in his word in John 3.16, I think we are so familiar with this verse. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, God loves us so much that he gave his only son. This was all done so that we could be saved, renewed, and receive eternal life. But save us from what? Save us from sin from eternal death, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In the beginning, when God created humankind, man sinned and was cast out from the Garden of Eden. And throughout time, man continued to sin, and that angered God. But God loved us and didn't want us to be punished and lost forever. That's why Jesus came down from his throne and sacrificed his life for us. Now, isn't that the most amazing hero ever? You know, the one who would give his life just to give, just to give us eternal life, to set us free and to save us. So the first character of Jesus, why he is our ultimate superhero is that he lived a righteous life. Jesus Christ is the model of righteousness. He is a living word of God. When Jesus came to this world, it was in the most hum humble way. You know, he was not born in the most sophisticated way, in the most um, a nicest hospital or anything like that, but he was born in a manger. And he grew up, didn't, you know, wear any nice silk or nice clothes or anything like that. He lived like an ordinary man, but walked this life in faith. The Son of God displayed his power with humility. He loved everyone. He did not boast and abuse his power. He, even when tempted, Jesus remained faithful and obedient to the Father. This obedience to the Father, no matter what he encountered, was what made Jesus righteous. And he applied it in his daily life. And that he did was good and in accordance to the will of the Father. The second character of God, of Jesus, is he had an infallible or an erring character. Usually, you know, superheroes have flaws. Some are easily tempted. Some have anger issues. Some have issues with, um, with their temper, very impatient, and so on. But Jesus never broke his patience. As the Son of God as he is, his character always showed nothing but the best. He never depended 
on the world's wisdom, but only on the Father's. Also, he always sought the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Jesus faced challenges, temptations, and struggles with a still heart. He never let his emotions get the best of him. Our Savior didn't plant anger in his heart when he was persecuted, when he was betrayed, even when he was tortured and, uh, and was about to be crucified. Jesus asked the Father to forgive them who sinned against him. In the end, he thought, he thought of us. And the third one is, he was serene and still. Jesus didn't live a calm and smooth life. When born, he was already persecuted. Even on the day, he became known as the Son of God. He, his life didn't get easier. It was a chaotic time. People were sinful and indulged in worldly matters. Jesus was no exemption to the struggles and trials of this world. He was the Son of God, and he was not treated as such. People would mock him, would ridicule him, but he remained calm because Jesus knew the truth. Just as he said in John 4, verse 16, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Even when people were, were disrespecting the house of God, he never displayed anger in a negative way. He still acted with righteousness. The fourth one, the fourth character of Jesus, why he is our ultimate superhero is, he has been the greatest inspiration of all. Have you ever wondered why Jesus came to earth just to save us? I mean, if he's even, you know, if he's God, he could save us without even, you know, coming down in her, on earth. He came to this world and gave his life to save us because he loves us and he wanted to be with us and relate to us as human. He gave up his throne to come here and personally touch our lives. He wanted to be one with us, even for a short time, and to see and know the power of God. He knew our hearts more than anybody else, and that's why he had to do what he did. He lived in this world and showed us how much, how must we live, and through him we know the way. His life became the most remarkable testimony in history that inspires us all. Number five is he demonstrated an unconditional love. Many people were, were cruel to Jesus. If you think bullying were only, you know, happen in school or in the workplace, no, you're very wrong because Jesus was bullied big time. And he experienced you know, all sorts of pain and hurt. Even his disciples caused him pain. But what did he do to these people? Did he plant anger? Did he tell the Father to punish them? What, what did he say? Jesus said, forgive them. You know, in his last words, in his last breath, he said, Father, forgive them. Forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Jesus is the embodiment of love, and love knows no faults. He loves us all equally and unconditionally. The sixth one is he has been true to his identity. You know, most superheroes would cover themselves, would disguise themselves. You know, Superman, um, he would wear you know, glasses just to disguise himself as Clark Kent. And Superman, um, no, Spider-Man would hide himself through that mask so that he will not be recognized. But the Son of God made it known to people who he was. It was a matter of who would believe or not. One thing is sure, it was his identity. 
He didn't hide from the world who he was, yet the world rejected him. Jesus didn't need to sugarcoat things. He was direct and frank of his true being. Jesus is the king of kings, but he did live like a king in this world. Why? Because he had greater kingdom up in heaven, awaiting for him. He knew who he was, and he didn't need to conform to the world. And last but not the least is he never sinned. In this world, life without sinning is quite impossible. But Jesus made the impossible possible. Yes, he lived a life free of sin. This proves how holy and divine Jesus is. Even when the devil itself tempted him, he didn't give in. He is God and he is in control. And being the son of God, Jesus was the perfect example for his people and lived up to that role. No mistakes, no wrongdoings, no acts against his father. Jesus was committed and obedient. Saints, Jesus Christ was the son of God, not only powerful, not only omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, but he is also a loving in a righteous in a righteous God. He is not only our savior but a superhero and a role model to us and through him we can defeat our enemy the devil. Yes, we have a real enemy, Satan. He is a true evil seeking to steal, kill and destroy. He was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and a father of lies. When we allow Jesus to rescue us, we come under his divine protection from the enemy. The Bible tells us that he fights for us. It says in Psalm 91, he he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the hour, the arrow that flies by day. Because He loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue Him. I will protect Him, for He acknowledges my name. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Mrs. Ellen G. White wrote in the Review and Herald in May 20, 1884. It says, trials and temptations may come, but the child of God, whether minister or layman, knows that Jesus is his helper. Jesus is stronger than the strong man armed. And he will rescue from the and will rescue from the power of Satan every soul that relies wholly upon him. Although we may be weak and helpless with ourselves, yet all the forces of heaven are at the command of the believing child of God, and the host of hell cannot make him depart from the right course if he clings to God by living faith. Yes, we are living in a sinful world. In an imperfect world, whether we like it or not, we will be facing injustices. We need the one who is just. I'm sure you've all figured it now that we are living in a sinful world and life is not fair. You know, there are, there are reasons that we that I love the stories of superheroes because they right the wrongs, they battle injustices, and stand up for what is right. Let's just take for Avengers. Take the Avengers, for example. They use their power, they use their resources, and courage to set things right. When you know, the terrorist Hydra attacks 
you know, attacks the world and destroys, wants to destroy the world. We also have a God who avenges. It says in Psalms 94, verses 1 to 2, O Lord, the God who avenges, O God who avenges, shines forth, rise up, O judge of the earth, pay back to the proud what they deserve. When we look around in so much evil that we see, those who would rape, those who would persecute, who would kill, who would torture, murder innocent people, we sometimes become discouraged and, you know, ask, our, ask why, why God allows these things to happen. When we face injustices, accusations, unfairness, we can rest in the hope that God sees all and knows all. It says in Psalms 37, verses 5 to 6, Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Yes, we love superheroes, but they aren't perfect. That's one reason that we identify with them, because they are flawed like us. But how much better to put our hope in a superhero who actually close to lay aside, choose to lay aside his life and glory to become human like us, to be tempted like us and yet remain perfect in every way. We all need a superhero, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords, the Avenger, the Captain, the Arrow, the Flash, the Hulk, the Iron Man, all rolled into one. He is powerful enough to defeat every foe and gentle enough to hold us in his arms. He is the hope for the hopeless, the help to the helpless, a hero for every time and place. Yes, Jesus Christ is our superhero who saves the day. And by the way, he is one day coming for his spotless bride, the church. So yes, he even gets the girl. Church, as I add my sermon, may I call on Sister Aubrey Sarsosa to render us a special meditational song entitled, To Rescue a Sinner Like Me. And as she sings the song, may we reflect and thank the Lord Jesus Christ for what he, was, what he has done for us, you know, to lay his life, to save us from the eternal death because of his love for us. God bless us all.